Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. So let's talk about using two different ISPs and trying to use that to double your bandwidth or have a failover, a backup internet source and what are the pros and cons of each? Can you double your speed? Can you have it automatically switch over for you and switch back? And so, you know, this is commonly referred to as dual WAN and WAN is WAN which is wide area network versus LAN which is local area network. So inside your house, that's going to be your local area network. And anything outside your house where you're using the internet, um, that's going to be the WAN thing. So uh, dual WAN would be what it sounds like, two different WAN services. So that would be two different ISPs uh, providing you internet. Uh, the other thing that people ask about is link aggregation. And now link aggregation is not the same thing as dual WAN. It kind of sounds similar, but one of the key things about link aggregation is that it's really tied to your local network. Uh, it's almost unheard of to have that capability to the WAN, out to the internet. So let's talk about dual WAN. I'm going to use my Asus router as a demonstrator for how I have it set up, how I can change the settings, what settings I think are the best, and then uh, hopefully I can answer a lot of your questions. If I don't, you can always put them down in the comments below and I will try to get to them. So what I'm going to say is that let's hop right in to uh, showing you the demo of the different ways you can set this up. I'm using an Asus RT-AC88U router, which really isn't the latest and greatest. That's a Wi-Fi 5 router, but these same settings are really there for um, all the Asus ones and even uh, for a different brand is going to be very similar obviously the the screen layout is going to be different but these same types of settings are going to be available and the concept still applies so for this one uh, let's go right into it and open it up let me show you the settings okay so here we are I have logged into my Asus router you can see here on the main homepage the network map I have my primary WAN and my secondary WAN, and they both say connected. So this tells you that I have two different WANs set up, and the key thing here is um, I have uh, multiple different ISPs. They're actually both cellular. I have four of them because I do all this testing for other home internet use. But I have uh, one of them plugged into the regular blue WAN port, and the other one I have plugged into an Ethernet a standard LAN port but you can con configure it so that it treats it as a as a WAN port and now this I am using the Asus uh, Merlin firmware which is like kind of a uh, sort of aftermarket but it's kind of semi supported uh, by Asus themselves it does give you some more options but uh, I don't know exactly which options are actually not on the stock Asus one most of these are still available but let's go in here uh, down here to the WAN tab and then you can see up here on the top of the tabs, there's one for dual WAN. So this is where, uh, by default, it's off. So by toggling it on, so let's, I guess I'll show you. When, when it's off, you have fewer settings to mess with. If you toggle it on, then you get this drop down of more settings. So here you can now establish what is your primary WAN. And that can be the WAN port, it can be USB port, or an Ethernet LAN. And then for my secondary, you know, sometimes they make those little USB uh, cellular, uh, basically, um, cards that you can plug in. And that's a common use for a backup. Um, when is you have that little USB-based cellular one, and it, that would work in this case here. Or you can go to Ethernet LAN, which is how I have it set up. And then you can select, on this router at least, ports 1 through 4. Any of those can be set up as a WAN port. So I have it on port 1. And there's two things here. One is load balancing and one is failover. And what you'll see is it doesn't say uh, double speed or something. It says load balancing. And what this does, is says right here in yellow, is that it tries to optimize um, which traffic goes to which WAN port so that it's balanced. And by default, this load balance configuration is a one-to-one. -one. So this works really best when you have two different internet sources that are roughly the same speed. So if they're both, let's say, 200, 
megabits per second, then um, it's very fair to have them as a one-to-one -one where it tries to split the traffic 50-50. But if you had one that was, say, you know, you had a gigabit service on one and then you had this DSL that was 10, um, you would not want to split those one-to-one -one because then your DSL would always be overloaded and maxed out and you would never be able to utilize your one gigabit plan. So you can change this ratio to like um, a you know nine to one I think is may maybe the most you can change it to and it's going to try to balance that out it's harder for the routers to work I would say if you have something that big of a discrepancy you're probably better off using the failover which means always use um, the primary one unless it fails and we can talk about that in a second on how does it detect that so the last thing I'll say for load balancing here is the reason why you don't get twice the speed is really breaks down to the fact that you can't split your internet traffic uh, going to different ISPs. So you know, let's say, you know, think of it as something like, um, you know, sending a letter out in the mail, and if you rip that letter in half and you gave it to two different uh, post offices, and they each only had half a letter. You know, with it ripped right down the middle and addresses is a half, one has a postage stamp, one has a return address, they wouldn't know what to do with it because they need those to be connected together so they can actually do something with that letter. And it's the same thing with internet data packets, is those packets can't be split and go to different ISPs. They can be um, split and, um, you know, go to... Uh, a, uh, a router that then puts them back together and then sends them out but that's really why you don't get double the speed you can't take a 200 megabit per second service and another 200 megabit per second service and get 400 megabits per second on a single computer but what you do get is if you have two computers that are uh, both trying to use the internet at the same time if one was doing a uh, full you know 200 uh, in this example maybe per second download, the other computer would, in theory, have zero speed to use up because you're already maxed out. And in a single WAN setup, what really most likely happens is this first computer would get um, cut in half, like to 100 megabits per second, and the other computer would get 100 megabits per second. But in a dual WAN setup that we're talking about here, both computers would get the full 200 megabits per second because they're using basically different ISPs to achieve that. So that's where you get more bandwidth, but you don't get more speed on any single device. So that's that's what the load balancing does. And as you, that's still a very good thing, but a common misconception, like I said, is that you get extra speed, but you, you don't. Okay, and then so here we're talking about the detect interval. So this is how it determines if you have um, yeah, an active connection on your primary WAN and, and also on your secondary. But here, you know, this default five seconds to me is very short. All this stuff adds overhead to your router. And in fact, when you turn on this one, at least in this um, configuration I have, if I turn on the load balancing, it turns off some of the um, antivirus and uh, malware detection, they call it. AI protection. It has to turn that off because it can't run that and do load balancing at the same time. There's not enough uh, RAM or processing power to do that. So I don't like 45 seconds, uh, and then it has it 12 times. So that means that you know it's going to take 12 times of it checking every five seconds before it actually says, "Okay, you don't have an active internet connection." I like to spread this out to something um, over half a second. And then I actually reduce my count of how many times it would flip um, and say, hey, yep, the, you don't have a good connection. So you could do one, you could do 30 seconds and do uh, twice. Uh, but what that means is that it's going to take, take two detections. So it will take one minute of not having internet in your home before it says, okay, I'm going to flip over now to my secondary. And so this is for a... Um, a failover um, setup that, that we're talking about, I guess. So I'll, I'll set that up there. Um, all right, so here I said 30, I said 2. 
and then you have two different types of monitoring. One's a DNS query and one's a ping. There's pros and cons to both of them. One of the um, downsides to the DNS query is if that DNS server is down, it's going your router is going to think that your internet is down, but really it's actually just that DNS site. So you want to pick a reliable one. Um, this one right here is a Microsoft. I think this is one that the Microsoft Windows uh, uses to check internet connectivity. So, um, but you can use a Google one. You can use lots of other different ones. And then the ping is uh, going out and pinging a website. And again, it's a similar type thing that you, um, it's, it's basically going out there and checking to see if that website works and responds back. There are downsides to that. And that is one, you don't want to overly do that because you might get flagged and um, they might block your traffic there. So that's another reason not to have it down at like every second to ping just constantly because you might get blocked. And then same thing here, if that website's down, it's not gonna ping and it's going to think you're down and then your network's going to be flipping back and forth. The other thing you wanna check here is allow a fail back. If you don't click allow a fail back, once you switch to your secondary, it will not go back to your primary until you manually go in there and do that. So by having to allow a fail back, you're now checking to see uh, when your WAN comes back online and then it will switch back from the secondary back to the primary. So that's how you can set that up. There is one more thing that's very important to go in here and set up. And um, it caught me off guard the first time. But that's you have to go back to your internet connection and then in this drop down, you got to make sure you go back and set up your settings for your secondary WAN. So here you can see, you know, I have a static IP set up for my WAN connection for my primary, where I go in there and establish what IP address I want for this router. But you have to do the same thing on your um, secondary, which is right here. And that's where I had to copy those settings over here to make sure that it acts the same with either of those and it will vary right because if your other ISP has like a different IP address range or has um, a different method of uh, signing a um, an IP address or you know any of that kind of stuff if you need to set specific um, uh, settings up you need to do that here and it's just one of those things that was a little bit um, hidden because you have to change that drop down so those are the things that really touch on for the dual WAN setup. Okay, so in here, you know, this is where the dual WAN setup, I have them both connected. If I go in here and change it to a failover uh, state, then I will, let's do a failover. All right, so I'm gonna hit apply to this failover and I'll show you what it looks like when I do a failover here. So um, go ahead and do this reboot here and then we'll be right back. All right, so I had just gone over there and I uh, unplugged. If you if you just saw what happened, actually I unplugged my WAN and I um, the primary one, and it switched over to the hot standby again. It takes it about a minute, um, depending on exactly when it's doing the interval checking, and then right at the beginning when I just started talking, if you noticed, it actually switched from the secondary WAN back to the primary WAN being the connected one. So it will do that switch automatically back and forth. And like I said, it does take some time. And so that's something that you do have to consider with the failback state is that you will get some um, intermittent um, break in your connectivity while it's going in and checking that. So that's um, something to consider, but um, otherwise it does work. And here it's showing you um, which one you're connected to and which one is standby. It'll also tell you if it's a cold standby, which means it's not uh, it's not active. Uh, I find it a little bit buggy sometimes when I first plug them up and, and uh, connect to it, it normally says I'm always cold standby. And after several minutes, it will figure out that, hey, that's actually a, a live connection there. So that's um, how to set these things up. Hopefully that answers a lot of questions on how to do it yourself. If you have any other ones, please put them down below. As always, uh, like the the video, subscribe to the channel if this stuff's helpful for you, and stay tuned for more content.